So we've learned what the variance and the standard deviation are, and we've learned how to calculate them both by hand, which we never want to do again, never, never, and with the calculator, which we will do again, lots and lots. Let's also go back and just kind of rethink for just a second what those numbers are telling us, and that'll help us with these next two examples. So let me scroll back to the big table with all the information about variance and standard deviation. Here it is. Gee, a table that's so large and full of information. I wonder if that would be helpful to put on the note sheet for an exam. <clears throat> hint, 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 hint. Okay, so the variance and the standard deviation are both measures of how spread out your data set is. In other words, they're telling you the average distance the values are from the mean. See that? That's key, right? This is what made the variance and the standard deviation they go together, so I'm kind of treating them uh, interchangeably here when I'm doing this interpretation piece, because they really are basically the same thing. It's just that the variance doesn't have the square root, right? So therefore it has weird units and we don't use it for interpretation. But other than that, they go hand in hand like peas and carrots, right? The standard deviation and the variance both measure spread in the interior of your data set. They give you a number that's going to measure, hey, how spread out is your data? Are most of your data points near the mean or far away from the mean or what? Both of these numbers are going to tell you that. For our class, the standard deviation is a bit more useful because it has the same units as our original data set. That makes it better. But keep in mind all these other properties that we have for them. Boy, I bet you those might be some useful properties for some multiple choice type questions. All right, so it has the same unit standard deviation as the original data set. So that tends to be the one we work with more often, but they both measure the same thing. And then this is key down here. It's the same thing, but just saying it a different way. If your standard deviation and your variance are measures of spread, measures of how spread out your data set is, then the larger your standard deviation and or variance, I guess I should say and or variance, the more spread out your data set is. Huh. Okay. So larger standard deviation, larger variance will make more spread. But what is spread? Spread is how much of your data is going to fall close to your mean or far away from your mean, because these are measures of spread from the mean, right? So I guess I could say more spread out data set from the mean. And that's key, because that's what both of these were measuring way back when we did it from the table. Let me just scroll back up real quick. I'm taking my time with this because this is super important that you understand what variance and standard deviation are measuring. And you can see in this deviation column, we're taking the difference from the mean, where that red arrow is. That's what deviation is. And these numbers that we're coming up with, variance and standard deviation, are basically trying to give us two different sides of the average deviation coin. Right? What was the average deviation for this data set? That's kind of what standard deviation means. Okay, so now how does that help us? Well, let's go look at our example. And please understand, I'm not belaboring that for my own health. I'm belaboring it because it's really, truly important concepts for you to get. Namely, it's really super important for you to understand that the standard deviation and or the variance, both of them, measure the distance, the average distance from the mean, right? The larger the data set spread is, the more spread out it is from the mean. Now that'll help us here, because when we look at these three data sets, what we want to consider is how spread out from the mean is everything. Are the data set values close to the mean or far away from the mean? If they're close to the mean, that's going to be a small data spread. And if it's far away from the mean, that's going to be a large data spread. So when you consider the three graphs, consider how far away all the values are. Now remember that the mean is the center, which in these three examples, it's pretty obvious that the mean is at four for every last one of these, right? I centered all of these on four on purpose so that we could all visually spot it, no problem. Okay, so the middle one's the one that's going to be, you know, we'll figure that out, but we'll figure out the, the, the lowest and the highest, and then the middle one will just be whichever one's left. Okay, so consider graph number two. I think that's the most obvious. When you look at graph number two, do you see how the tall the bars are at one and seven? Those are the extreme values, one and seven. So since most of the data, or excuse me, 
um, that particular graph has more data out on the edges than any of the other graphs, that means it has the most spread. Let me say that again. When you look at graph number two, see how it has the super tall bars at one and seven. So those are really far away from the mean, which is at four. So graph number two actually has the most spread because things are far away from the mean. Graph number three, on the other hand, has the least amount in bars number one and seven. Look how short they are. They're only up to a height of three. And by the same token, look how tall the center bar is. That's because graph number three has more data at the center and less on the edges. So graph number three has less spread, and actually has the least spread. Graph number one has kind of the same height-ish, more or less, for all the bars. So it's got more spread than number three because it's got more at the ones and sevens than number three has, and less at the four than number three has. But it doesn't have nearly as much spread as graph number two, which has everything almost out at the edges and very little in the middle. There, and I've just color-coded it for you all. So the smaller spread has more values near the center. Right? So least amount of spread is going to be all near the center, all packed in tight. Right? Small spread, all shoved into the middle. The larger spread is all going to be spread out from the middle. So if you look at this one up here, everything's far away from the middle. So that's the most spread. The medium amount is here, where the bars on the edge are tall, but they're not as tall as graph number two. So if we're going to go smallest to greatest amount of spread, the smallest amount of spread is here at graph 3, because everything's packed in the middle at that, that high center bar, to this graph right here, right, which has got a little bit in the middle, a little bit on the edges, kind of everything in between. It's the Goldilocks of the, of the group. And then to the greatest amount of spread, where everything's on the edges and very little is in the middle. So it goes graph 3, graph 1, then graph 2. Smallest spread, medium spread, largest amount of spread. And we can keep that interpretation right up as we look at the next example. So I have a bunch of different curves here, six of them in fact, and the six standard deviations are 0 0.5, 0.75, 1, 1.25, 2, and 3. And our mission is to, whether we choose to accept it or not, much like Tom Cruise in the Mission Impossible movies, we have to match the graphs with their standard deviation numbers. So we'll begin with the least amount of spread, which is the 0.5 and the 0.75. Now remember, spread is spread from the center. And it's really obvious that all these graphs are centered right around zero. So when it's spread is very small, 0.5, it's going to be really packed in along that center, which is right here in this top left graph. Everything's really smushed in at that center line of zero. The next most smushed in one sure that's the way to interpret it. The most smushed in one next is this one over here on the top right. So that one's 0.75. It's got some smushing, but it's not nearly as smushed in as the top left one. So let's go to the other extreme. Let's go to the most spread out, which is the three and the two. So the most spread out will be spread far from the mean. right? So when you look at the four graphs that are left, which one has the largest spread from the mean? Well, it's kind of obviously the bottom left corner. The bottom left corner has a spread of 3, because everything's really far from that center line at 0. So that one would be 3. I mean, it's the most like what an ice cream cone looks like when you drop it on the ground in the summer, right? It goes splat and everywhere. So that would be number th um, 3 in the bottom left corner. Number 2, then, uh, standard deviation of 2 would be the one that's in the top middle. Hold on, my graph is being weird. Because the top middle is kind of really spread out, but not as spread out as that bottom left corner. And that leads us to the two most difficult ones, the 1 and the 1.25. Now you might notice, um, for various reasons, when these ones shrink, uh, me get packed in, their peaks get really tall. So that's another way you can spot that in this particular graph, but that might not always be the case. So don't rely on the height so much. Rely on the spread, the distance from that center. So when you look at these last two graphs that are left, one of them's got a little bit more spread out. It's a little bit wider in the tails, and you can see it on the horizontal axis. You can see this line 
goes out to pass whatever that tick mark is, 5 looks like. So that means that the one on the right has to be 1.25 because it's a little bit more spread out and the one on the left has to be 1 because it's a little bit more packed in so it's going to have a smaller standard deviation. Which is kind of what this whole example just reminds us of just like the last one. Standard deviation and variance are measures of spread from the middle, spread from the mean in the center. The larger the number for standard deviation, then the larger the spread. The smaller the number, then the smaller the spread. It's as simple as that. Right? That is what the, the graphs show us, and that is what the number shows us. Keep in mind, I didn't do variances here, but if you wanted, the variance, for example, on the bottom left corner would have been 9, because the standard deviation is 3, so that means that the variance has to be 9. As a matter of fact, just for fun, I actually found the variance for every single one of these. So remember, all the variance is is the standard deviation squared. So I took, whoop, hold on one second, there we have it. So if I take 0.5 and I square it, I get 0.25. Or if I take 1.25 and I square it, because, oops, that's all the variance is, is the standard deviation squared, remember that, then I can get the variance values. So 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1. Yes, it is possible for standard deviation and variance to be the same. And then the standard deviation is 3, so the variance is 9. And then the only other one that's tricky is 0.75 squared, which is 0.5625. So when you look at those, you can compare either the standard deviation values or the variance values. The larger the standard deviation, the larger the variance. So standard deviation of 3 yields a variance of 9, which is the largest standard deviation out there and the largest variance out there for the graph that has the largest spread. So that tells us that standard deviation and variance both measure spread. Um, standard deviation the more spread out your data are for your data set, the larger your standard deviation and variance are going to be. And it also tells us that if we're comparing two data sets, then the larger standard deviation one, one is also going to have a larger variance and it's going to have more spread from the mean. And this one with the smaller standard deviation is going to be less spread out from the mean. Similarly, when your data set is less spread out from your mean, then you're going to have a lower standard deviation and lower variance. So what less spread out would be more packed in, right? And more spread out would be less packed in, right? And I just made a note of that little definition right here.